Today we get two programs, two, I feel like a Doubleman gum commercial, two programs in one, really two stories in one. The first, I think you know quite a bit about already, it's about a woman trying to run a small local business being, uh, is railroaded the right word, uh, 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 bulldozed by several levels of government, by several gigantic corporations, and finally by the courts, who at first blush seem to be in her favor, but not so recently. The second story is about how you and I cannot afford justice. I'm not saying this. The chief judge of Canada said this just the other day. We welcome to the studio Susan Hayes. Hello, Susan. Hi, one of One of my local heroines. Uh, you have been running, you were running your maternity clothing store at the corner of 16th and Canby for how long before the whole Canada Line thing started? I uh, moved to that location in 98. Uh, so in total I was there for 10 years, uh, okay. but the last five were dreadful. A nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what kind of a business were you doing? How many square feet? Uh, you don't have to tell us your your bottom line, but you were you were doing an okay business. Yeah, I was doing great. The, yeah. We'd moved off Fourth Avenue, and uh, I moved my business over to Canby Street, and uh, things just started to get better and better. And 2004 was actually my best year ever. So. On the heels were, you of going around, were you going around taking uh, birth control pills away from people <laughs> so that there would be more maternity clothes well, needed? a good half our business is non-maternity as well. Oh, so okay. We, okay. Have, uh, we have our clients when they, yes. they come to us when they're pregnant. And then they also just keep coming back after they've had their children uh, because our clothes are, it's lifestyle wear. Okay, so yeah. then you get this uh, notice in one fashion or another. Surprise, we're going to build a transportation system up this street. But good news and bad news. The good news is, don't worry, we're going to bore underground. Yes? Yeah, well, the dialogue in the beginning was whether it was going to go down the Arbutus Corridor or not, and then they chose Canby as the uh, location, and all of the information that was presented was um, focusing on whether it would be an elevated guideway or whether it would be a tunnel, and the documents that were um, available for the public all uh, demonstrated that it would be a board tunnel, particularly from uh, 2nd Avenue up to 37th. Now, my store is located on the corner of 16th and Canby, so my concern was whether there was going to be a station there. So I recall um, contacting the city of Vancouver uh, sometime, it was like the spring or summer of 2003, and I was assured that it would be, oh, it's going to be a board underground tunnel, and uh, 16th and Canby won't be the site of a station. So. I took that information and stowed it away and then a couple months later I negotiated another five years on my lease on my store space on Canby. And, and this was not just a vague rumor. Uh, I have in my hand an appendix, the RAV proposal, Canby corridor land use and so on. Many, many highlighted portions, but this one says, of all alignment types, board tunnels have the least effect on the surface. Consequently, board tunnels are used when constructing blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, impossible to cause un uh, unacceptable disruption. Mm. And then suddenly you wake up one day and surprise, surprise, we've changed our little minds. Yeah, two of my um, my neighbors on Canby Street uh, contacted me and said, you won't believe what they're planning on doing. They're doing this thing called uh, a cut and fill, or um, they call a cut and cover. Cut and cover. They've been calling a cut and cover. Um, and I just I just said, well, there's no way they can do that through here. It will it'll destroy all of us. It'll take forever. And uh, so we that was January the 26th. I think the first story. Um, broke in the Courier. And um, then the 27th Bill Boy at the Vancouver Sun wrote a much more detailed description of our uh, future nightmare. And we all hustled together, uh, we being the neighborhood, hustled together a meeting on uh, January 31st of 2005. So it's been six years ago. And uh, we're shocked to hear them cavalierly talk about how it was going to be three months in front of any given place. and we're going to mitigate the impacts and we're going to maximize the predictability, all these little pat phrases, and it turned out to be nonsense, all of it. And here, here's, a, here's a little piece from Laura Jones, Vice President of Western Canada for the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses. Quote, one restaurant that I frequent has had to let go two staff members who've been working for them for 18 years. 
Others were forced to close or relocate. Another restaurant owner was found sobbing during an empty lunch hour, wondering how she and her husband were going to support their children. Many borrowed against mortgages, retirement savings, or from family to stay in business. No compensation, not even an apology, yet Seattle, Ms. Jones says, did this for its light rail project, uh, did it, meaning provided some compensation. Yeah, well, that's the normal way to go. I, uh, it is the usual thing to do is to compensate uh, for this level of disruption. I mean, we're talking about a, a several billion dollar project lasting many years. And the really, uh, I think the really frustrating thing, given the recent ruling, is the government is looking to um, exempt itself from any legal obligation to tell the truth. Really, they lied about how this project went forward, and uh, through the strategic use of all these confidentiality agreements, they apparently signed hundreds and hundreds of confidentiality agreements along the way in order to um, procure um, the necessary contracts with different agencies so that they could have the statutory authority to go forward. What, what happened literally to your business? Was it cut in half? Was it cut by a third? Well, it uh, averaged out to about uh, about half, but it, there were some days where we had absolutely no business at all. It's just like having a, a snow day for uh, four years, you know. It's um, it just went on. You you, you can't imagine. I, it's hard for me to even put it into words how stressful it was for all of, and still is. I mean, I'm still digging myself out of a big financial hole, largely because of all my legal fees as well. Um, and many families just didn't make it and I fielded phone calls on a almost daily basis from people who were crying and looking to me to you know to keep the fight going and so I um, I did have the weight of the neighborhood and I've had tons of support from people who just find this whole matter completely outrageous to I know, happen I know in a that, democracy. I know that the owner of uh, uh, Tomato that was on the corner uh, not far from you uh, moved as quickly as as he could, and and the Stellas that that has taken its place has done very well after this was all over. Well, you missed but, the middle one. You missed Daddios. Yeah, there was a restaurant that oh. failed in between. So, and that was the story of many but, places. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I don't think the owner of Tomatoes is as happy with his new location as he was with the Canby Street location because it was a fixture there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. At some point, because we only have so much time on this program and we want to cover a lot of territory, at some point you said enough of this and you took whom to court? Well, initially um, I couldn't imagine that the subject of many years of engineering reports and uh, all of the environmental assessment on the project was done on a board tunnel and I couldn't possibly imagine that they would consider those two methods of construction, this huge canyon um, 50 feet deep uh, with all the dump trucks of earth that have to be ex excavated and, and all of the other um, uh, ho horrific sort of side effects of that and a bored tunnel project where the machine actually bores underneath the ground and the surface is largely dis um, not disrupted at all except where the machines uh, come out into the uh, portals where they have to be right. sunk in. And so we challenged the environmental assessment of the project. We, and uh, that was the first court action, was, um, was taking the environmental assessment Who's to we? court. Uh, we? A neighborhood group called Do Rev Right. So okay. we filed um, a petition and uh, actually I guess we were uh, partially successful in that first round because they went for another environmental assessment of the new method of construction. But then the, the, the case that we're most familiar with is that you then took who, somebody, to court and you were awarded, you won, and you were awarded a $600,000 finding. Who was it that you took to court? Well, we sued everybody. It was, uh, was the, uh, the Queen by right of Canada, the yes. province of BC, the city of Vancouver, TransLink in transit, SNC-Lavalin and the airport authority. SNC-Lavalin, who, by the way, are as we speak... Canada Line. The Canada the Line Canada Consortium line. in but, transit. And, okay, and that included Lavalin? Yeah. But Lavalin, as we speak, is building a prison in Libya. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I just, I, I, I don't have no comment. It's just, okay, it's so, so, so what happened? You took them to court. That went on for how long? We, our three-week trial was March of 2009. Yes. Uh, May of 2009, uh, Justice Pitfield rendered his ruling that, in fact, the nuisance was absolutely caused by the cut-and-cover construction and, and that we were blindsided and that this was an extremely unfair um, circumstance. This was severe. This was... Uh, intolerable. They have all these legal terms for deciding what nuisance is. Well, there's 
justice and there's fairness and those things have just been left right out of the equation. And let's repeat some of this. Justice Pitfield said in plain English in his finding in your favor mm. there is no question mm. that this was a nuisance uh, that caused the destruction and harm to your business. Yeah, no question. Mm -hmm. And and of course the the opposition uh, tried to say, oh no no, it wasn't really a bother. And he and he laughed at them, as I recall. Uh, well, the the argument on the other side is that they're trying to suggest that a board tunnel would have had exactly the same impact to my business losses as a cut and cover construction would and I just you have to suspend all disbelief. Why it's, were you uh, operating in a subway or something? Yeah no. you know you can even you can build uh, board tunnel projects are built all over the world uh, and they do them they even build stations underground there's no need to do what they did to rip up the right. whole street and now, all the utility removal and everything else. Now this this uh, project and, and, and switching to cut and cover was never approved by Vancouver City Council. No, the um, Vancouver City Council was given documents that said that the um, the section from 2nd to 37th um, would only be a board tunnel. There was no other um, option that was being proposed for that area. And let, let me read I into the record here two comments, and you can tell everybody who made these comments, because it's kind of fun who made them. Here's a commentary in a 2007 editorial in which somebody wrote, the liberal rationale for refusing to consider compensation is that it will set a precedent. All the more reason to do the right thing, exclamation mark. Doesn't it make sense to set a precedent that small business won't be wiped out by major public projects? And that was written by? Mayor Gregor Robertson now. <laughs> by Gregor Robertson when he was in MLA. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another choice one, or as Spencer Tracy would say, Churse. Surely none of them thought, despite their hard work, it would be a B.C. Liberal government that drove them out of business. She, this person was siding with Canby merchants, and this was another 2007 editorial, and this she was... Christy Clark. Who is the premier designate, mm -hmm. as we speak. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Interesting they, and very, they, uh, very yeah. disappointing that, they're, um, that they haven't... Come up with and when and when you now. and when you won the six hundred thousand uh, dollar award, did either of them call you to congratulate you? Well, Gregor Robertson testified on my behalf during Good. my trial. Good. And his testimony was powerful. Was equally powerful to that editorial that he wrote there. Um, I haven't talked to a person who doesn't believe that this is the wrong thing to do. That what what's happened is wrong. Okay, very quickly because we just have a minute before we take a little break, and then I want to switch move this into the realm of justice for all or none, uh, this award has now been reversed by BC Supreme Court. So what are they, are they coming to you and saying give us our money back? I sincerely hope not. I don't have it. I, yeah. I've spent so much on 300,000 went to my former lawyer and another 100,000 for the appeal. And uh, how do I go forward from here? It's uh, You were awarded $600,000, mm -hmm. Susan Hayes. Mm -hmm. 300 went to your lawyer, another 100 on the appeal. Mm -hmm. Okay, they haven't asked for the money back yet, but, no. the, but they have been, it has been reversed. Yes. Uh, under what kind of thinking? Well, again, it's the issue of the statutory authority of the project. Basically, they, um, they're looking to get a blank check. When the government funds projects like this, you've got a, a multi-billion dollar consortium, and they're profiting right out of my pocket, and they're wanting a blank check to do that. They and want the legal right to be able to destroy a private citizen's life's work so that they can profit and build something for a artificial political deadline and to save money. And have the right to go and build prisons in Libya. We'll take a little break, folks, and come back, and we'll continue this conversation with our guest, Susan Hayes, former Canby Street uh, uh, merchant, and then, uh, show you all how uh, justice has become absolutely unaffordable. Let me quickly point out uh, that uh, if you want to write us for any reason whatsoever or you want to check out our social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook and so on, uh, davidburner.com is the place to go. My blog and whatever else is, is all there. I think my laundry is there, my laundry list and my shopping, my grocery, it's all there. Okay, uh, we'll take this little break and say thanks to some wonderful people who uh, allow David Byrne to be on Shaw Community TV Channel 4.